You're listening to Harlow Hospital Radio, and now it's time for this year's panto. Oh, yes, it is. There are two ugly sisters who are so hideous, even the Mona Lisa turns away. Their mother is so wicked that when she chops onions, she doesn't cry. The onions do. We have a prince who is looking for love, and a servant who is just looking for an easy life. We mustn't forget Buttons, the Baron's right-hand man. Always there when you need him. He's a bit like a scarecrow. He's outstanding in his field. Finally, there's Cinders. Such a sweet girl. But will she live happily ever after? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. So sit back, relax, and get ready for some magic. Plenty of laughs and lots of Christmas cheer as we bring you our wonderful pantomime, Cinderella. Oh, hello. Hello, boys and girls. Thank you for tuning in today. I am here to tell you all a special story. It is a story about love. It is a story about good, triumphant over bad. And a story about never giving up on your dreams. I hope you have lots of laughs and chuckles along the way too. Oh, what am I doing? I haven't introduced myself yet. My name is Buttons. I live and work at Rickerton Hall, the home of Baron Broke. He lives there with his new wife, Hazel, and their daughters from their previous marriages. I am a jack of all trades, me. I tend to the gardens. They are beautiful. I stood out in the garden early yesterday morning wondering where the sun had gone. Then it dawned on me. I am the Baron's right-hand man, and I attend to his every need. The Baron lost his wedding ring yesterday. I have looked everywhere for it, but I still cannot find it. The Baron says I should look harder, and so later I'm going to get my head shaved and have some tattoos done and try again to see if that works. I do all the handyman jobs around the place. The Baron once gave me a list of the jobs he needed doing. And so I did items numbers one, three, five and seven. He went mad, he did. I told him I only do odd jobs. I fixed all the lights and fuse boxes. I used to be an electrician, but I lost that job because I always came into work late. My boss always asked me, why are you insulate? People were usually shocked when I found out that I was a bad electrician. Baron broke is exactly what he says on the tin. He is broke and could do with some more dough. Have you ever wondered why money is called dough? I guess it's because we all need it. Between you and me, I think he only married his new wife as she comes with money. Baron broke has one wonderful, amazing beautiful, funny, gorgeous daughter called Cinderella, or Cinders for short. She has recently gained two ugly stepsisters, and what vile people they are. Their names are Esmeralda and Prunella, and they are, to be frankly, horrible. Our story starts one morning when the family got ready to see a special royal visitor who came from far away to make a special announcement. (laughs) Wakey, wakey, Esmeralda. Good morning. Now, do you have to be so loud in the morning, Prunella? You haven't forgotten what today is, have you? Oh, you'll have to remind me. Oh, a royal prince from a faraway land is coming to live in Arlo, and he is going to make a special announcement to everyone in the town square this morning. Oh, summon Cinderella and Buttons and order them to start getting us ready. (coughs) Hurry up, Cinderella, quickly. Oh, sorry, Prunella. I was doing my own chores. The first thing I have to do when I wake up every morning is to make my bed. Tomorrow I'm returning it to Ikea. Why can't you just do your own jobs? I could never stick at a job. When I did work, I always pulled sickies. 
my boss always asked me why I only got sick on work days. I said it must be my weekend immune system. Cinderella, this royal prince is coming to Harlow and I'm sure, no, certain that he must be coming to look for us. Well, actually me. You must make me look the, my most beautiful. First, wash and iron my favourite dress. Yes, says Meralda. Anything else you want me to do? Yes, I want a pedicure. What now? Well, there's no day like toe day. But make sure my dress is ready first. Off you go, chop chop. Oh, right, I'm on to it. Oh, for goodness sake, I am fed up with ironing. I've ironed so many of your clothes. Well, at least they have decreased. Oh, Prunella, I do believe that the prince is coming here to ask for my hand in marriage. What do you mean, ask for my hand in marriage? The prince will surely see that I am his future bride to be. <laughs> I don't think so, sister. But I do love a great wedding. Uh, do you remember when we were invited to Tony the Tiger's wedding? I do. It was a bit of a frosty reception. Buttons, buttons. Yes, you called for me, Esmeralda. Buttons, make sure that our Rolls Royce is ready. You must chauffeur us to the town square so we can meet this prince. Get to it. Quickly, the rolls must look spick and span. Take it to the local car wash. Um, I, I can't. I'm banned from going there. I let my pet Dalmatian off his lead there and he caused such havoc. He ran right through the car wash. Oh, well, at least now he's spotless. <laughs> Well, if, if you cannot go to the car wash, you must wash the car the traditional way with a bucket, sponge and soap. You know, I'm thinking of buying a new car, one that has a transparent driving wheel. Really? I would steer clear of that if I were you. Cinderella! Cinderella! Oh, yes, says Meralda. I'm only halfway getting your dress ready. It is taking me ages. I decided to change my washing powder. That was a bold move. It is tiring having to do all your housework and chores, you know. Well, then, make the chores fun. The servants we had where we last lived always made housework into competitions. They had a race to see who could hang out the washing the quickest. They were often level pegging. Cinderella, I am hungry. Make my breakfast in bed. I'm sorry, I can't do that. I'll have to go to the kitchen. And please, please remember what my father said. Don't spend too long using your hair dryers. Please think of our energy bills. Right, off to make you your breakfasts. Oh, Esmeralda, I just don't know what to do about this energy thingy crisis. Oh, oh no, oh, I don't see how crying will help. Now, Mumsy has also warned us to be careful about how much we are spending and that we need to be cutting back. She's limiting our allowance from now on. I know. I've decided that from Monday, I will stop using spray deodorants. Roll on next week. Your breakfast is ready. Good morning, Esmeralda. Good morning, Prunella. Good morning, Good morning Mumsy. Mumsy. Good morning, stepdaughters. Good morning, stepdaddy. I'm starving. I rub. I'm so hungry. I could eat my watch, but that would be time consuming. I'm really looking forward to a big English fry up when we were on our honeymoon in France. The food just never cut it. <sighs> we were going to go to an exclusive Michelin five star restaurant in Paris. I asked the maitre d' whether he had any reservations and he said, yes. The food is overcooked and bland. So we left it. We stayed in a haunted bed and breakfast, but we left before having the breakfast. Why? The place was giving me the crepes. 
go, we went to a restaurant that served breakfast any time. And you know what I ordered? French toast during the Renaissance period. I really am hoping Cinderella has made me some great vegetarian food. Becoming a vegetarian is one big missed steak. Can I get anyone a tea or coffee? Good morning, Buttons. Did you get that new kettle, the one that is meant to save us on our electricity bills? You know, the one Boris recommended. Yes, I went into the local appliances store and said, can someone sell me a kettle? The man at customer services said, Kenwood? I said, cool, where is he? Buttons, switch the radio on, please. Let's listen to the morning news. Good morning, Harlow. You are listening to the 8 o'clock news. I'm Phil excited. These are the latest news headlines from around the world, the UK and Harlow. Cadbury's have just delivered a giant chocolate bar to the Bank of England. It is a massive boost for the economy. The CEO of IKEA has just been elected the Prime Minister of Sweden. He is currently assembling his cabinet. The Devon and Cornwall Music Festival, due to take place this weekend, has had to be cancelled. They could not decide whom to put on first, the jam or cream. A robber accidentally locked himself in a glass cabinet at the Harlow Museum last night. He ended up making an exhibition of himself. And that is your news roundup. I'm Felix Sighted. Well, after breakfast, we'd better make our way to the town square. I wonder why this prince is calling an audience. I guess we will soon find out. Rumour has it he's looking for a wife, and I know two young, beautiful girls who would be the ideal match. Right, I'm off for a bath. Buttons, did you buy me some new soap? Someone stole mine from the bathroom. Who would do that? I think it was my Robert Duck. <laughs> And so the residents of Rickenton Hall all doled themselves up to the nines for the audience with the prince. The prince was a lonely man who was desperately seeking a wife and had gone from town to town, country to country, seeking a lady to marry. His shut-up lines were great. I liked the ones he said to the girls from Mexico. Tawana, go out with me? Let's catch up with him and Dandini, his loyal, trusted servant, as they arrived in Harlow Town. So which town are we in now, Dandini? This is the town of Harlow. I have confidence that it is here you will find the woman of your dreams, sire. I really hope so. We've been searching for a woman for what seems like forever. Sire, if I may speak out of turn, um, don't you think you are being a little bit too choosy? What do you mean? Well, every girl I thought was a perfect match, you denied. I really liked the blonde one who works at the zoo. I thought she was a real keeper. And that tennis player I tried to match you up with was nice. No, love meant nothing to her. That baseball player could have been the one. Oh, she had a hard time getting to first base. Uh, the pastry chef had great potential. I was afraid she would desert me, though. Uh, well, hopefully Harlow will be the town where you'll find love. Now I have bought you a lovely house in Harlow. So tomorrow night you shall host a party to get to know all the local ladies... Now, all you need to do is go out there, talk to the crowd, and invite them all to come. There is such a huge crowd here. It's really busy. When I was younger, I dreamt of a career where I estimated crowd sizes at different outdoor events. I wonder how many people are in that field. My ideal career was a coffee taster. But then I thought... How would I sleep at night? 
Quickly, Prunella, we must push to the front. I must make sure that the prince sees me. Out of the way, people, coming through. Oh, princey, princey, I'm here, look this way. <laughs> Good, worthy, noble people of Harlow. I am Prince Charming, and I have just moved to your beautiful town. I am here to seek out my future princess. I have been searching towns, realms, and kingdoms for many years now, and I hope that Harlow will be where I find my one true love. I am to host a housewarming party tomorrow night, and I would very much like all you good citizens to come. Please see Dandini, who will give you your invitation. The best thing is that it will be a fancy dress party. Ooh, I love dressing up. I will definitely be there, Princey. Oh, you try to stop me. I love nothing more than to go to a housewarming party. I once organised a surprise housewarming party for my Eskimo friend. And how did that go? He's homeless now, sadly. Cinderella, you must go into town and find me a wonderful, exquisite housewarming gift for me to give to the prince. A housewarming gift? I know. I'll get him a radiator. Oh, you silly girl. Use your brain. Didn't you go to school? Of course I did. My favourite teacher back in school was Mrs Turtle. A funny name, but she taught us well. Cinderella! Get us all invitations from the prince's servant. There is no need to get one for yourself. You have to stay at home and start chopping enough firewood for us to keep warm this winter. Yes, Esmeralda. And how many invitations shall I give you, my lovely lady? Four, please. Two for my stepsisters. One for my stepmother and one for my father. But why not one for yourself? Don't you like a good party? Oh, I do. But I'm not allowed to come. My stepsisters will not let me. Oh, well, why? I will be too busy doing all the chores and the housework. Oh, then do stop wasting your time chatting away with Cinderella. You need to do more chores around the house. Oh, change the subject, Esmeralda. OK. More chores around the house need to be done by you. Before I became Prince Charming's servant, I was married. My wife of five years left me because I didn't do enough chores. It was devastating. They didn't do much to deserve it. Now, Cinderella, go into town and pick up all we need for this party. Here is my shopping list. Now, make sure you get all my beauty products. And you must get something to clear away that disgusting mould in the kitchen. I left my chocolate bar in the kitchen far too long and it went mouldy. Life on Mars confirmed. Oh, what a horrible life I lead. I cannot believe that I am left out again. I would have loved to go to the prince's party. Right, I'd better go and buy everything that my stepsisters need. And so Cinderella did not get an invitation to go to the party. Her horrible stepmother and stepsisters saw to that. Cinderella walked solemnly down Harlow High Street with her shopping list, buying all the items her stepsisters desired at the local shops. At least I've got a break from this task. Sometimes the Baron gives me a shopping list. Once he asked me to put ketchup on my shopping list. But then I couldn't read anything. Well, hello there, my dear customer. Welcome to Chase's Pharmacy Fashion and Beauty Salon. I'm here for all your household goods, medication, fancy dress, costumes, shoes and beauty products. Oh, hello. First, I need something to get rid of bacteria and germs. Ammonia cleaner? 
Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you worked here. I do work here. My name is Chase and this is my little business. What can I do for you today? I'm so glad that you've come to my shop. I need more custom. Lots of our high street stores are disappearing. The bra shop has gone bust. The paper shop has folded. The watch menders has called time. The food blender factory has gone into liquidation. And the shoe repairers has been sold. If things continue like this, I might have to start an online jewellery business instead. If you want to help, give me a ring. So what can I sell you? I really must make some sales. The other day, one of my best customers asked me to sell them a lipstick. I accidentally gave her a glue stick. She still isn't talking to me. I need to buy makeup for my stepsisters. They are going to this prince's party tomorrow and they need lots of makeup to cover up their various foils, spots and blemishes. Oh, well, lucky for you. I sell all types of makeup. I sell makeup for catwalk models, for movie stars and for ghosts. Ghosts? What makeup do ghosts wear? Mascara. I also sell makeup to sad clowns. Sad clowns? What kind of makeup do sad clowns wear? Foundation. The cosmetic side to my business has not done great recently. Do you know lipstick is losing its market share at the moment? Well, I guess that is because we have recently been living in a mask era. I also need fancy dress costumes for this party. Oh, fancy dress parties are all the rage at the moment. Look at my fancy dress rail. I have fancy dress costumes for all sorts of themes and parties. I have a camouflage outfit. I can't see one. And uh, a Winston Churchill costume. A man borrowed this for a prime minister impersonation competition. I gave him a suit, a coat and a hat. Did he win? He came close, but no cigar. I've been invited to a fancy dress party at Arnold Schwarzenegger's house. Arn is decided on a theme of classical composers. I'll be Bach. <laughs> what are you going to dress up at as the party? Can I sell you any makeup? No, thank you. Actually, I'm not allowed to go to the party. My stepsisters and my wicked stepmother won't let me go. They say I have to stay at home to finish off all the housework. Anyway, I do not wear makeup myself. I can't. I have a rare disease that makes me allergic to cosmetic products. Really? It's true. It's something you can't make up. Oh, it's such a shame that a beautiful girl like you is not allowed to go to the party. That does make me feel so sad. You know, the prince is looking for a new wife. And you seem such a lovely girl. It's a shame he will be missing out on meeting you. Oh, that is sweet. But it is what it is. <sighs> right. So what else is on your shopping list? Oh, sorry. Am I keeping you up? No, no, no. It's just that my neighbour keeps making sports equipment in his shed late at night. He's always making a racket. It says on this list to get some athlete's foot cream for my sisters, which is funny as they are not even sporty and they are rubbish at running. And so Chase sold Cinderella all she needed for her mean stepsisters. We now go to Prince Charming's new abode. He was settling into his new home and Dandini was adhering to his every whim. The prince must be a very difficult boss to work for. When I have a bad boss, I just do not go into work and I make up any excuse. My boss would ask me, why aren't you coming in today? And I would say... I have an eye problem. I can't see myself coming into work. But Prince and Dandini were busy planning the housewarming party. Let us catch up with them over dinner. Dandini has just cooked a delicious steak. (laughs) 
Uh, how did you find your steak tonight, sire? Well, I live next to my potatoes, and there it was. The bland salad you served up was a problem, though. Well, that will need addressing. Would you like a cheese plate for after, sire? I can get you brie, stilton, and cottage cheese. Cottage cheese? I have a hard time figuring out why I just cannot consider cottage cheese to be truly a cheese. But it's just a curd to me. Uh, and how did you find you are settling into your new house, sire? Oh, good. Although I'm getting some quite strange housewarming presents. Like what? Well, one friend bought me an elephant for my room. I said to him, thanks, and he told me, don't mention it. Well, I have made sure that you have all your utilities set up, and I have registered you with the local GP, optician and dentist. I told the doctor's receptionist I needed an appointment. She, she asked, about, how, about 10 tomorrow. I replied, well, I don't need that many. Well, I've already been to see the GP. Did some home surgery on my funny bone yesterday. He told me that I would be in stitches for weeks. And that opticians, well, they charged me a fortune. I tell you what, they saw me coming. Well, your new dentist is the dentist of the year. He's even got a little plaque as a prize. So do I have any famous people coming to my housewarming party? I've invited many dignitaries and celebrities, but I'm still awaiting responses. I've asked Donald Trump to come. I thought he might have time and space in his diary since he can no longer go into the White House anymore. But why can't he? Because it is for Biden. I want to make sure that I'm showing off all my lovely antiques on awards. Have you polished my trophy cabinet yet? I have, sire. Although I am sad to report that someone has stolen your limbo trophy. Just how low can these thieves go? The house decorating is looking good. The guy laying the new stair flooring used to be a gymnast. I really hope he is going to nail the landing. At least we haven't had any problems with our neighbours yet, have we? My neighbours listen to great music, whether they like it or not. Day turned to night and night turned to day. It was the day of a prince's fancy dress housewoman party. At Rickenton Hall, Baron broke his wife and her daughters prepared for the party ahead. Let us join them now in the midst of their beauty preparations. They say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, which is why I am so self-conscious around beekeepers. <laughs> Prunella. I'm squeezing out the lemon juice. It does wonders for my complexion. Well, maybe that is why you always look so sour. Girls, I really do hope the prince chooses one of you tonight. You girls really should have been married by now. I'll have you know I could marry anyone I please. But that's the problem. You do not please anyone. I'm the kind of girl that men look at twice. Yes, because they can't believe it the first time. Well, I am the most beautiful woman in Harlow. I can spend many hours in front of the mirror just admiring my beauty. Do you think that is a vanity? No, it's imagination. Hello, girls. I have brought the Baron back from the barbers. What do you ladies think of my new haircut? Looking very swish, hubby. Which barbers did you go to? That new one in town. The barber and I had a good chat whilst he was cutting my hair. He did interrupt my horse story, though, even though I told him not to cut off my ponytail. Ha, ha, ha. Does anyone think that this mud pack has improved my appearance? I would say it did for a while, but then it fell off. Cinderella! Cinderella! Yes, Esmeralda. Help us with our fancy dress outfits for tonight. I was thinking I might wear my Britney Spears red cat suit. 
well, that will be better than that screwdriver dress you wore to that dress party last year. Yeah, it was not the best costume, but I still turned many heads. Well, after reading the invitation, I think I might go to the party dressed as a knife. A knife? A knife? Whatever for? The invitation said to look sharp. In my younger days, I once went to a fancy dress party as a loaf of bread. The birds were all over me. And I once went to a fancy dress party dressed as a tennis ball. I got served straight away. Well, the clock is ticking, so you would all better decide what to wear soon. I have chosen. I will go as a pharaoh. I wish you were an actual pharaoh. They were always really rich. I guess it was because they ran huge pyramid schemes. What about you, Mumsy? I will go as a fortune teller. You know, I think I would make a great fortune teller. But something tells me I have no future in it. And Esmeralda and I have finally decided that we will go as two pirate girls. Our costumes even have a revolutionary eye patch made by Apple. It is called the eye eye patch. <laughs> are we ready? Your chauffeur awaits. Oh, thank goodness you are the designated driver button so we can all get giddy on the punch. Let's get going. I cannot wait to get up close and personal with the prince. <laughs> now, Cinderella, make sure you chop all that firewood and unclog the bath plugs from all my hair. <laughs> Do not get lonely now, Cinderella. <laughs> So I drove all the party goers in the limo to the party. I felt so sorry for leaving the lovely Cinderella all alone doing all the chores. However, little did Cinderella know that a secret visitor would come to Ripkinton Hall that night and that Cinderella would be able to come to the party. <laughs> Well, here I am, all alone at home, with only chores to do all evening, whilst everyone else enjoys themselves at the prince's party. I really hate my life. Oh, right, I'd better get on with chopping the wood. I hope I don't hurt myself. I don't want any stupid accidents. Who could that be? I'm not expecting anyone. Cooey, cooey, remember me, it's Chase. Oh, hello again. What are you doing here? Tonight I am to be your fairy godmother style person. Your story has been on my mind since we met yesterday and I cannot get your situation out of my head. I am determined that you shall go to the prince's party, whether your horrible family like it or not. Ah, oh, that is so kind of you. But I can't go. My stepsisters will get so mad if they see me there. I am supposed to remain here and chop wood for winter. No one will recognise you. No one will know that Cinderella is or was there. You will not remember how I helped you. Nor will you be able to recall the night once it is over. The spells I cast mean your memory will be erased of the whole evening. But at least you would have gone, experienced the party and got to meet the prince, even if it was for just one night. But how will I get there? Buttons is on strict instructions to stay at the prince's house and he can't give me a lift. Don't worry, I will work my magic. All I need is a few bits and pieces from your kitchen. Bits and pieces? Yeah, yeah. Things you will have in your kitchen cupboard. Things like uh, wagon wheels or gingerbread man and a pumpkin. We don't have any wagon wheels. Actually, I don't think we have any biscuits at all in the kitchen cupboard. 
I did buy a pack of those animal shaped biscuits, but I had to take them back to the shops as the seal was broken. What about gingerbread men? Well, the ones we've got, um, they've only got one leg. One leg? Well, I guess they can be called limp biscuit. And we don't eat pumpkin at this time of year. Why not? Because you get all tummy ache. Well, if I cannot use my magic to turn all those items into a horse and carriage, I will have to order you a black cab instead. Don't worry. I know a really good taxi driver. He always goes the extra mile. Well, maybe you ought to get a new one. Hang on. Are you actually a real magician? Yes, I come from a whole family of magicians. We all are. Well, except for my uncle Ian. He sadly lost his magic. I can do all sorts of magic. I once showed a mime one of my magic tricks. He was speechless. And I also do lots of magic with chocolate. I have loads of Twix up my sleeve. You may not have the items I need to make you a luxurious carriage, but I can cast a spell to give you the best fancy dress costume ever. I can magic any fancy dress costume from my shop right here in Ricklington Hall, just with one click of my fingers. Now, have you decided what to go as? Um, what kind of costumes do you think would suit me? Uh, a bumblebee? Hmm, that might work. When I go up to the buffet table, the sushi can say to me, wasabi. I could make you into a butterfly. Hmm, butterflies just aren't what they used to be. An alien costume? I don't think an alien would attract the prince. No one would want to make friends with an alien. Oh, that's not true. All you need to do is to have a down-to-earth conversation with them. I don't suppose I could have a teddy bear costume. You could have. But the delivery driver only bought me part of the bear costume. I really wanted to choke him with my bare hands. Well, as it is nearly Christmas, I want to go with something Christmassy. Oh, well, I could do you this fleece jacket. Decorated with the GPS navigation unit. Fleece Navidad. Yes, this Mrs Santa Claus costume is gorgeous. And the one. Thank you so much, Chase. Oh, yes. I think I have done a fabulous job here. Mrs Santa Claus, you will be the belle of the prince's party. How are you finding the black boots? Really comfortable. The most comfortable boots I have ever worn. Much better than that pair I was given for my birthday. I had to re-gift them. It was a reboot. Make sure you look after that belt. It cost me two grand. Well, that was a waste of money. Now, Cinderella, this is important. You must leave the party by midnight. That's when my magic runs out and you will be back to wearing your normal clothes. You will never remember how I helped you and I will not remember how I helped you. The night will be special, but will always be long and distant in both of our memories. So I chauffeured everyone else to the front door and delivered them to the party. I didn't want to spend all night by myself. So I can have a snack in tea. I donned my leather jacket and went as Danny Zuko from Greece. You know, the best thing to sneak in is his leather. That's because it's made of hide. Let's join the party now as it starts to get into full swing. You are looking suave in your costume, Prince Charming. Dressing up as James Bond makes you look very sophisticated. Much better than all those other times when you kept on dressing up as a shark. Well, quite honestly, that novelty was wearing a little thin. 
James Bond is such a great character to to go as. I once tried shoplifting a James Bond DVD, but the security guard scared the living daylights out of me. You look greater in your Roman soldier outfit, Dandini. I like your little touches of the Roman numerals stitched onto your costume. Who thinks they should bring back Roman numerals? I, for one. I do think you've done a wonderful buffet spread. I cannot wait to travel my guests with it. Remember when you lived in Italy and there was that fat woman who got stuck in the door where the buffet was? I just couldn't get pasta. Andy, let us listen to the latest news before our guests arrive. Good evening, Harlow. You are listening to the 8 o'clock news. I'm just in case. These are the latest news headlines from around the world, the UK and Harlow. A lorry carrying snooker equipment has shed its load on the M11. Police are reporting queues in both directions. The thief who has been stealing clothes from washing lines from homes in Harlow has finally been found guilty at Harlow Crown Court. On the stand, he was here telling the judge, I've been there, done that, and got the T-shirt. A shop assistant at the local Harlow supermarket has stopped an armed robber by attacking him with a pricing gun. Police are now looking for a man with a price on his head. That has been your news roundup. I am just in case. What playlist shall we start the party with? How about some ABBA? I love ABBA. I was on holiday in Sydney once and saw this bloke with a didgeridoo playing Dancing Queen. I thought, that is Aboriginal. Ooh, and then let's have some U2. Great band, sire. Did you hear that U2 once gave away a free concert? Apparently the crowd was very pro bono. But then, then I would love to hear some Linkin Park. Do not talk to me about that band. My girlfriend left me because I was obsessed with that band. But I suppose in the end, it doesn't even matter. Ah, looks like our first guests have arrived. Good evening, Prince Charming. Welcome to Harlow. I am Baron Broke. Please accept this wine as a gift for your new home. I hope you like this bottle. My friend owns his very own winery. He gets annoyed, though, when I go there and mess with his red wine. Sometimes I add fruit juice to it and he gets as sangry as ever. I love wine. I always decide which wine to drink on a case-by-case basis. Oh, husband, please do be quiet and stop boring the prince. Your life is so boring that the person who stole your identity gave it to you back. Hey, hello there, princey. woo uh, 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 Hello. Nice to meet you. Welcome to my home. I am Esmeralda. And I am Prunella. Ignore my sister. It's me you want to be talking to. And I am Buttons. Nice to meet you, geezer. Wow, you got a right posh set up here, haven't you? What lovely furniture you got. Yes, thank you. I'm very partial to nice furniture. But the other day, someone stole my furniture polish. Rest assured, this isn't over. I will find them. That's my pledge. Welcome to Arlo, my prince, dear Prince Charming. My name is Hazel. (laughs) Well, aren't you a handsome devil? I know I'm going to have a... Do I need to keep an eye on you? Is there an airport nearby? Or is that my heart taking off? Mother, I thought you wanted us to flirt with the prince boy. You are married to Baron, you know. You love him. Well... Hazel loves me. I know she does. She treats me like a god. Every evening at dinner, I get a burnt offering. Pimpsy, are you by chance an appendix? Uh, I don't think so. Why on earth would you ask me something like that? Well, because... I have no idea how you work, but I have a feeling in my belly that makes me want to take you out. I mean, Princey, is your name a Google? 
Huh? And because you definitely have everything I've been searching for. Oh, um, evening, ladies. I am Dandini, the prince's servant and confidant. Why doesn't everyone look fabulous in their fancy dress costumes? Good show, everyone. Why, hello there. Another handsome young man. One for each of my two daughters. Girls, look at this handsome specimen. No, another dish. Are you a parking ticket? I'm sorry? Uh, Because you've got fine written all over you. You leave him to me. Do you have a map? A map? Yeah, I just got lost in your eyes. You must be an electrician, because you're definitely lighting up my night. Oh, um, uh, Prince Charming, why don't you take your guests to the dining room and offer them some buffet? This way, everyone. Follow me. Oh, Princey, uh, do you have sultanas? No. Why? Oh, how about a date, then? <laughs> oh, see what I did there, Prunella. How about a date? There he is, says Merelda. Oh, Princey, can I take a picture of you so I can show Santa what I want for Christmas? Oh, please. Phew, what terrors. I do not think that any of those ladies would be suitable for the prince. Oh, another guest. Hopefully this will be someone classier. Oh, good evening. I'm here for the prince's party. Oh, welcome. Come on in. Nice to meet you. My name is Dandini. Hello. And it is customary for someone to tell you their name when they are introduced to yours. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Where are my manners? My name is um, Barbie. Yes, real name, Barbara. Nice to meet you, Barbie. I do love your outfit. Very Christmassy. Everyone likes wearing a Christmas outfit, don't they? Prince Charming always loses his cool every time he tries to arrange his Christmas jumpers in the wardrobe. I think he needs to help with his hanger management. The prince isn't really that angry, is he? No, not really. I think he just needs a woman to help him settle down. Shall we go through to join everyone else? Uh, May I present you, sire, Barbie? Good evening, Your Majesty. Well, hello. It's such a pleasure to meet you. And what a fantastic costume. I've always believed in Father Christmas. I'm not agnostic. Are you hungry? Let me show you to the buffet. Great. I'm starving. Oh, look, you have cut the sandwiches into Christmas tree shapes. They look so fresh and they haven't even gone curly at all. Yes, the best way to stop sandwiches from curling is to hide their brushes. And wow, your cake table looks so amazing. Oh, well, if you like that, you should see my fantastic stereo make of cake. It's a ghetto blaster. You must have a fantastic pastry chef. I don't actually have a a pastry chef. I'm not that rich. I bought these cakes from a cake shop yesterday. Most of the cakes were £5, except one which was £10. I asked the shop owner why it was so expensive, and he said, that's Madeira cake. And who are you talking to, princey boy? Oh, may, may I introduce you to Barbie? Barbie, this is Esmeralda and Brunella. Barbie? As in barbecue? Such a silly name. Actually, Barbie is just short for Barbara. Now, now, stepdaughters, please do be nice to strangers and uphold our family's reputation. But it's such a silly name. I don't love a barbecue, though. Nobody throws one as good as me. My record is 21 feet. Hmm. Esmeralda, enough. You're not acting like a lady. Oh, do be quiet, stepdaddy, and stop getting in the way of me and the prince. Uh, um, Baron, 
Tell me, do you do you uh, do you like do you like fishing? Oh yes, I do. I like to watch people fishing from all around the world live on the internet. However, sometimes it can be a bit difficult to find good streams. Buttons, do you, do you like sports? Sports? Love them, Your Majesty. I am very sporty. I am a natural at weightlifting. I picked it up quickly. Oh, Princey, I was always so good at athletics at school. You know, I represented my school at the long jump. I even read the book, Ten Steps to Improve Your Long Jump. Isn't that cheesing? Uh, what about you, Barbie? Do you like any sports? I am more of an indoor board games kind of girl. I love word games and puzzles. I suspect there will never be an edible version of Scrabble. But if there is, I will eat my words. Yes, we often play Scrabble on family game night. It's always such fun. But Hazel always keeps on taking one letter out of the bag each time we play, then doesn't even play them. I'm a beekeeper. Uh, shall I suggest we all do some dancing? I concur. I love dancing. I took my wife to see an Irish dancing show called Stream Dance the other week. It wasn't as good as River Dance, but then it was only a tributary act. Hubby here isn't the greatest dancer, though, are you? Remember when I first saw you at the local disco and asked if you liked to dance? You said yes, and I said, great. Can I have your chair, then? Please, Dandini. I think we should play Lady in Red first. Barbie, as you are the Lady in Red, would you care to take the first dance? Why, yes, it would be an honour. Wow, you really can dance. Well, my father did get me ballet lessons when I was younger. I was always told that ballet helps you to stay alert. Well, I guess it, it keeps you on your toes. I had to make my own ballet costumes when I was younger. I didn't know where to start at first, but then I put two and two together. So you said that you've been looking for love for a while. Why don't you think love has worked out for you? I don't know. I just can't seem to keep anyone. One girlfriend I really liked wasn't happy with the birthday present I gifted her. She wanted something with diamonds, so I got her a pack of playing cards. Another ex-girlfriend became too obsessed with trying to find the largest known prime number, so I dumped her. I wonder what she's up to now. <laughs> You're funny. So you should have been snapped up by now. I feel so comfortable dancing with you. I'm always on the lookout for the right lady. I once saw this gorgeous woman walk into a cosmetic surgeon's office. I followed her so I could ask her out, but then I decided not to bother. Why was that? Well, catching her picking her nose put me right off. Barbie, the sparkle in your eyes is so bright. The sun must be jealous, and if beauty were time, you would be eternity. Wow. No one has ever said such nice things to me before. I have a great way with words. I swallowed a whole book of synonyms today. It gave me the sorest throat I've ever had. <laughs> you are like a pot of glue. I would love to stick close to you forever. Yeah, time up now, Barbie. The prince is dancing with me now. Change the music, Dandini. Oh, but... No buts. I am now dancing with the prince. Let us go dancing. So, Princey, you are quite a mover. Well, I, I have taken dancing lessons. I've always wanted to learn to dance just to impress the ladies. So I started with salsa. I wanted something I could dip into. So, let's have a conversation. Um, plucking a question at random, what music are you into? All sorts. I love listening to music. My cousin was a musician. He was in a band called The Hinges. They used to be quite big in their day. They used to support The Doors. Oh, I, I like The Doors too. I went to the local record shop once and asked, have you got anything by The Doors? 
He said, well, yes, I've got a bucket of sand, a mop, a bucket and a brush. Dear Princey, can I tell you a joke about Elton John? It's a little bit funny. I'll move over, Esmeralda. It's Prunella's turn to dance with the prince. Oh, great. Actually, I'm starting to feel dizzy now with all this dancing. I've been going around in circles for ages. I tell you who else is good at going around in circles? Farmers. Farmers? Why farmers? Well, because, Princey, they are protractors. <laughs> Aren't I funny? Yeah, hilarious. Now, don't be sarcastic. Naughty. I identify as sarcastic. My pronouns are par, par. Move over, Brunella. I'm getting bored of dancing with that boring baron. Come here, Princey, and let me show you my moves. What Help! Hey, I'm not boring. I have many talents and interests. I once went to Glastonbury. Yes, and you were boring there. You were a real stuck in the mud. I'm switching off the music, sire. I think that would help stop these ladies circling you with their moves. That's better. Goodness, it's nearly midnight. Oh, goodness, is that the time? I have to go. Time flies when you're having fun. I don't get that. Why would you time a fly? No, don't go. Stay. The night is still young. I really don't want to go, but I have to. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to leave. Wait. Bandini, go after her. Don't let her out of your sight. Bobby, wait. Oh, let her go, Princey. There is still one stunning girl left at your party, you know. Oh, where am I? Why am I in the middle of Harlow Town? And how did I get here? So strange. Have I been dreaming? Better get myself home. Maybe I've been sleepwalking. How odd. And so, after Barbie regenerated back into Cinderella, she walked back to Richardson Hall, where she should have been the whole evening. The next day, Prince Charming searched the town records for a resident called Barbie, but there was no record of her ever existing. The only clue that Barbie, aka Cinderella, was ever there was the one right black Santa boot, which had been left on the prince's front doormat. Prince Charming, keen to find Barbie, went on a quest all over Harlow to find her. Convinced that, pa- that Barbie was actually a pseudonym, the prince and Dandini asked every lady to try on the boot in order to see if they were the mysterious Barbie. I have spent my whole life searching for an invisible dolphin, but now I don't see the porpoise. I don't care if this takes all year, Dandini. We will find Barbie, for she is the girl I am destined to marry. Sire, we've knocked on hundreds of homes and endured many odd looks from everyone. No one's foot seems to fit this boot, and no one has left a boot to match this one either. Well, why don't we look in the local shoe shops? Maybe the local shoekeepers will recognise this boot and remember selling it to Barbie. How about this shop? Chase's Pharmacy, Fashion and Beauty Salon. Oh, hello there, gentlemen. Welcome to Chase's Pharmacy, Fashion and Beauty Salon. What can I do for you today? I'm looking for the owner of this boot. Have you sold a boot like this? Whoever owns it is the woman of my dreams, and it is imperative that I find her. Well, yes, I sell those kinds of boots. You know, I'm a big shoe expert. I'm experienced in making clown shoes. That is no small feat. I've worked in a shoe recycling centre. Now that was soul destroying. I also invented a shoe made out entirely of Lego, so that when you stand on it, it does not hurt. You just get a little taller. Yes, yes, yes. 
But would you remember if you sold this boot to anyone recently? Oh, I'm afraid I would not remember that if I had or hadn't. Sometimes I use my magic and that automatically makes me forget things. But I might be able to help you another way. Do you believe in magic? Uh, I'm not sure. Sire, when I was married, I had a magic trick addiction. My therapist suggested I wrote to my wife about it, but I just could not pick up the pen and tell her. I'm a magician. I can cast a spell over this boot and it will then transport you straight away to where the owner is. Let me put my hand on it, click my fingers, and I will get you to its owner. She will not remember anything that happened and it will be as if this is the first time you have ever met. But if I do this, I'm going to need your help. I am in need of a magician's assistant. Do you know anyone? They are so hard to find, maybe because they are highly sawed after. If you help us, I will offer you the services of my favourite servant, Dan Dini. Uh, thanks, sire. Brilliant. Here goes. Abracadabra. Well, we have been transported to Ricklington Hall. He really was a magician, wasn't he? So this is where Barbie must live. Ring the doorbell, Dandini. Oh, good afternoon, Your Majesty. This is an unexpected surprise. Welcome to Ricklington Hall. What can we do for you on this good day? Good afternoon, Buttons. We are looking for the owner of this boot. Well, that is definitely not my boot. I can't wear boots. My doctor told me I was too big for my boots. He then diagnosed me with an overinflated ego. No, Buttons. We are looking for a Barbie who we believe lives here. She is the owner of this boot and she left it at my housewarming party at midnight. She was the girl in red who I danced with and who has stolen my heart. If this boot fits, she is the girl I will marry. Barbie? There ain't no Barbie that lives here, Your Majesty. Well, may we come in and try the boots on all the ladies who live in the house? We think Barbie used a fake name. Everyone looks so different out of their fancy dress costume, so it might not actually recognise her in her normal clothes. Oh, by all means, come and free. Prince Charming is here, everyone! Oh, Princey, you came back for me. I always knew that you would. Oh, your hand looks very heavy. Can I hold it for you? Sister, Charming is here for me. Hello, Princey. There must be something wrong with my eyes. I cannot seem to take them off you. Oh, Prince Charming, I was going to call you beautiful, but then I realised I don't have your number. Oh, ladies, please, I am so embarrassed for you. Sorry, Prince Charming, about my family's uh, conduct. You know, you can't choose your family, Your Majesty. I would like all the ladies in this house to try on this boot. If the boot fits, I believe that you are Barbie. The girl who came to my party as Mrs Santa Claus and who won my heart. And what a boot that is. My doctor really liked my sensible choice of footwear. I overheard him telling his colleague that I had serious, healthy shoes. Sire, you must remember these guests from your party. They definitely are not Barbie. Give us a chance. Be fair. Well, I suppose we should let them try on the boots. Just to rule them out. Everybody was in fancy dress, weren't they? Yeah, let me try the boot on first. No, sweet daughter. I am going to be the one trying it on first. No, mother, I am. I am putting my foot down. Put the boot on, Dandini. Oh, ah, 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 ah. I think your foot foot is a loser, sister. No. I have been defeated. My turn, my turn. Let my foot try on the boot. I know I'm going to be totally nail this. Oh. Uh, ah, 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 ah. Mm. No, your foot does not fit the boot either. 
Let me try. Let me try. It's my turn. Well, I'm not sure that the boot would fit you, my love. I say you are a five and a half, possibly a six. Be quiet, Baron. You aren't too good looking yourself. Oh, oh. no, it doesn't fit. Right, that's it, sire. None of these ladies are Barbie. I, I think we should leave. Hang about. What about Cinders? Yeah. What about her? It's not her boot. She wasn't even at the housewarming party, was she? No, it won't be her. Better get on your way, Princey. No, I want to meet Miss Cinders. I want to make sure that I have asked every woman in town to try on this boot. Buttons, fetch her here, please. Hello, Your Majesty. Why, hello, beautiful. I have been asking every woman in Harlow to try on this boot. I believe it was worn by the most beautiful girl I have met at a fancy dress party. Could you try this boot on for me? Why, OK. But what a strange request. It fits, sire. But I don't remember ever wearing a Father Christmas boot like this before. Please have explained to me that you will not remember meeting me at my party. But it was there I fell in love with you. I truly believe you are the one for me. Cinderella, will you marry me? Why, sure, yes. Anything to get away from that gruesome twosome and my wicked stepmother. What? Really? I am devastated. It should have been one of my daughters. And so Prince Charming and Dandini were successful in seeking out Cinderella, who masqueraded as Barbie. Their wedding day is almost here. But first, let's see what happened on the stag night. Dandini took the stags to the local comedy club. I do love stand-up comedy. Makes you think, why must an eight always stand up? Because if it lies down, it's forever. Dong, the bells are going to shine. I am so happy, Dandini. Welcome to the family, Charming. Let me give you some words of wisdom. Marriage is a three-ring circus. First, there is the engagement ring. Then the wedding ring. And finally, then comes the suffering. Mommy Baron, don't put the poor lad off. Here are our seats for a comedy show. In honour of Harlow Hospital Radio, celebrating over 50 years of broadcasting, the comedy is all about radio. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. My name is Stand Up. Uh, you know what I love to listen to? The radio. It's just great, isn't it? I always tell jokes about radios when I do stand up. Sometimes the reception can be a bit uh, poor. Uh, I've always loved music. Uh, I've got my love of music from my father, who was a conductor. Uh, he always listened to the radio on his bus. I have a daughter, and uh, I brought her a radio for her birthday. I tell you what, uh, she isn't very ecstatic about it. Uh, it's my birthday uh, last week. Uh, it was my birthday last week, I should say. And uh, a friend of mine told me uh, he's got me a radio that uh, has no batteries as my birthday present. Uh, but I think it's uh, I think it's a wind up. I've uh, I've just brought myself a new smart car, and uh, I've read the manual very carefully. And it says that I should uh, not turn up the stereo to full volume. And I think that is definitely sound advice. Uh, did you hear about the broadcaster in the aeroplane? Uh, they're on air now. Um, so uh, I've had to uh, take one of my stereos to the repair shop as it's not working. Uh, as the left speaker was taken away, the right speaker said, Audios. <laughs> And uh, I love DJing and presenting, but uh, I think I should change my name to Billy when I present my show. Uh, then I can finally be Billy on air. 
And um, the thing about digital radios is that uh, there are no fancy aerials anymore. I used to think that all radios had antennae. Then I realised it was a stereotype. I've been Stand Up, and thanks very much for listening. And so our pantomime ends at the church, the wedding of Prince Charming and his bride, Cinderella. A happy ending after all. They married for better or for worse. He could not have done better, and she could not have done worse. Cinderella, you have made me the happiest man alive. After so many searches, I am so happy that I have finally found my one true love. Charming! I feel like a notebook who has finally found a pencil. I have found my Mr. Right. And I am like the King of Hearts, and you are my Queen of Hearts. We are perfectly suited to each other. You should have married me, Prince, eh? No. I'm like Comic Sans, and you are Times New Roman. You are just not my type. And for now, us two... We're like a pair of faulty jumper cables. I agree. We just didn't have that spark, did we? Well, my daughters will find someone eventually. We're off speed dating tonight, straight after the wedding reception. We've tried so many different speed dating companies. Hopefully this one will be successful. It is one especially for arsonists. Hopefully there'll be lots of matches And me and Dandini are off on our nationwide tour with our brand new magic act. I get to saw Dandini in half every evening. He's getting used to it and he has been enjoying using the trapdoors. I guess it is just a stage I'm going through. I hope Hazel and I will rekindle the love that Cinderella and Charming have. She shot me with a nail gun today. She must think I'm a stud. She also called me pretty. Well, the full statement was, you're pretty annoying, but I like to focus on the positive. Here is to the very happy couple, to Prince Charming and Cinderella. And now we leave a town of Harlow as Charming and Cinderella head off on their honeymoon. Love has conquered over everything on this very special Christmas Eve night. Merry Christmas to all our listeners and a very happy new year from us all. You've been listening to Harlow Hospital Radio's 2022 pantomime, Cinderella. The pantomime was written by Johnny Hayes and produced and edited by Andy Meadows. The cast in order of appearance. Prunella was played by Mark. Esmeralda played by Andy. Linda played Cinderella. Hazel was Cosmic. The Baron was John. Feel Excited, the newsreader, was also John. Prince Charming was Will. Bob played Dandini. Chase was played by Mark. Just in case, the newsreader by Rob. Stand Up, the comic, was Martin. Hair and Beauty was provided by Anita Haircut. And the set design and painting was done by Jack the Stripper. Thank you very much for listening. Merry Christmas.